I was a New York City public school kid. I think it made me talk fast and gave me street smarts. I went to Wash U because of strong science. But here I am taking Western Civ. Dr. Riesenberg was the most impressive teacher I had ever come across in my life. He taught with such passion, and I'm grateful to this day. I went down to the gym to see about different kinds of sports that I could get involved in, and I was kind of hoping they had a fencing team. And then Coach Louder sticks his head out of the door and he goes, you looking for a sport? And I said, well, yeah. And he said, try cross country. And before you knew it, he had signed me a locker, issued me my shoes, gave me the training schedule, and I had never run more than a mile in my life. We formed an intramural basketball team that was mostly the cross country team. So we had no talent at basketball, but we could run like hell up and down the floor till people were tired out. In one particular game against a team that took this stuff very seriously, there was an opponent who had gained a reputation for being rather angry. And when I committed an egregious foul on him and he came up and got in my face, Jeff stepped between us and knowing his karate skills, the other guy backed down, smart. Jeffrey Ling's daughter Alyssa is a current arts and sciences student and a member of the varsity swim team. Our Alyssa, she's her own person. She'll swear to her dying breath that I had no influence whatsoever on her choice. But if you want the truth, am I proud that my daughter chose my alma mater to go to school? Of course I am, I'm deeply proud. And I'm even more proud that she loves it. Jeffrey earned a doctorate, then a medical degree, and joined the Army, where he was the only neurointensive care specialist and the premier subject matter expert on traumatic brain injury. There was this one young soldier that I remember. They'd hit an IED and he was blown out of the turn of his Humvee and broke his back in two places. I checked him out and yes, he had a broken back, but he had not injured his spinal cord at all. So I turned to him and I said, you have the million dollar wound. You have the wound that was bad enough to get you shipped out of the war theater, but not so bad that you wouldn't fully recover from it. And uh, he starts to cry and he goes, don't send me home. Just please don't send me home. So I said, why? I mean, you're a hero, why would you not want to go home? And he said, because sir, if you send me home, what am I? I'm an assistant manager of a fast food restaurant, but here in Iraq, I get to help people rebuild the country for themselves. And that was profound. If I could spend my life taking care of these kids who are over here doing this job for this reason, it makes one's whole professional career worthwhile. Jeffrey's work has brought the best science, medicine, and technology to wounded soldiers and civilians in the war zone, as well as to the poor in remote corners of the world. I marvel at what the Department of Defense, with a huge contribution from Jeff, has done in terms of addressing the needs of America's heroes. To devote his life not just to the care of individual patients, but to developing the technology that can help treat traumatic brain injury, that can restore functionality to somebody who's lost an arm by use of an artificial limb. They reflect not just an inquiring mind, but a determination to advance science and at the same time to do good. I'm really proud of the fact that I knew him back when and that today, more than 40 years later, I can still call him a friend. <laughs>